What's happening here? Nutrients is biological response modifiers. What are they doing? In the scientific literature, in the Medline, you can find studies showing what's happening. It's immune regulators. They're altering genetic expression. They're detoxifiers. They're steroid hormone control. All of this is happening in a whole food diet. Better living through chemistry. That's what DuPont Chemical taught us for about 50 years. Here's some nutrition experiments. The milling of grain, which began at about 1000 AD in Europe, which created uh, many of the diseases of civilization we have today. Berry, berry. In 1897, we went down and showed the people in Southeast Asia how to mill their brown rice into white rice. And we created berry, berry, which, which means literally, I cannot, I cannot. Uh, there were things in the rice, thiamine specifically, that, that uh, allowed them having good health. Saturated fat and butter to hydrogenated fat and margarine, trans versus cis. Huge experiment going on right now. Don't eat hydrogenated fats. High fructose corn syrup. We switched to a low-fat diet. We're getting fatter than ever. I agree with my good friend Doug Kaufman. What's going on here? Why does high fructose corn syrup generate what's called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? because I think there's mycotoxins in the corn. This is the corn they couldn't sell to anybody else, and so they turn it into high fructose corn syrup and put it into the number one selling item in grocery stores, soft drinks, uh, and that's a, a huge experiment going on. Genetically modified organisms, bad idea. So, looking at a healthy meal plate, what should we eat? What I suggest, one third of your diet should be low fat, high protein foods, fish, wild game, poultry, lean beef, eggs, beans, dairy, spirulina, kelp. I suggest everybody in the room start eating kelp, nori, wakame, uh, dulce, very good food. One third of your plate should be covered with cooked wholesome plant food like oatmeal, beans, bread, tortilla, pasta, yams, nuts, grains, legumes, and cooked vegetables. And the other one third of your plate should be covered with raw, colorful fruits and vegetables, such as tomatoes, spinach, carrot, peppers, fruit, broccoli, cabbage, and onions. And you can overdo anything. You're eating too much fiber. <laughs> so if you switch from a low fiber diet to a high fiber diet, and you find that you have to wipe yourself in the bathroom with a bath towel, you need to cut back on the fiber intake. You can overdo anything. These are some patients that I worked with uh, this lady had stage four breast cancer. Her bone scan lit up like a Christmas tree. Uh, a year and a half later, she was disease free and uh, I think outlived all the doctors who said she was gonna die. <laughs> this gentleman who came to us with stage four lymphoma and we first noticed he's dying of malnutrition. We need to get him some TPN, total parental nutrition, low sugar TPN, then got him on some other therapies, a whole food diet. Uh, eight years after, his uh, after he was supposed to die, he was doing good, I saw him. This lady had stage 3B breast cancer, had a lumpectomy, and used nutrition as her sole therapy. Now 10 years later, she's growing her own organic garden. Let's look at a uh, person who did not have cancer, I did not work with, but teaches us a lot about what can the body do if it's pushed to the edge. Galen Clark. Uh, in about 1850, Galen Clark was diagnosed with end-stage tuberculosis. He was coughing up blood and chunks of his lungs, and this was the number one cause of death in that era. And his doctor said, get your affairs in order. You have three to six months to live. And so Galen Clark said, well, as long as I'm going to die, I might as well get happy. Here's a very good prescription, people. So he said, I'm going to go to the place I consider heaven on earth. He went to Yosemite. Number one, he got happy. Number two, he carved his own tombstone. What do you want them to remember you? What do you think they're going to say at your funeral? Look, I think she's moving. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. What do you want them to say when you're gone? So he carved his own tombstone. Number three, he started doing what he wanted every morning, which was to get up in this beautiful valley and plant trees and create trails and protect Yosemite. And number four, he started eating whole foods. No processing. He started eating foods that were available in Yosemite Valley in 1850, which was small game, rabbit, deer, fish, uh, water, uh, nuts, uh, f some fruit, a little berries. And basically, he didn't die three months later of end-stage tuberculosis. He died just shy of his 96th birthday, outliving the tuberculosis by 53 years. And what I'm sharing with you is your body wants to be well. I mentioned my little package here. I'll be in the back of the room. 
But what we're talking about here is your body is a garden. The earth is a garden. Cancer is not just a micro lump in your body. It is a macro problem, people. I'm starting to philosophize here, but essentially we're dealing with overwhelming greed that drives our food industry and our health industry, and it's not necessarily dealing you the best cards that you should get. And so I'm saying, putting all this together, what we need to do is think of your body as a garden. What would you do if you found a garden that wasn't working properly, a barren patch of land? You would go in and take out the sticks and stones and weeds. You would till up the soil. You would plant the right seeds. You would nourish it, fertilize it. You'd water it and pray over it, and hopefully, within about three months, you'll start getting some results. And I have many people who come to me saying, you know, I got your book, I tried your diet yesterday, and I don't feel any better yet. <laughs> this is all about a process. And so what we're talking about here, folks, is all of life is good vibrations. Let's have a little music to uh, wrap things up if we could. I hope you'll sing along with me. This is... Got our uh, sound going? The Garden Song by David Mallett says what I'm trying to share with you folks, inch by inch, row by row. Sing along with me. Inch by inch, row by row, I'm gonna make this God. By inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Turn off the sound background here. I'll just take it. We'll, we'll take it. We're, we're, we're unplugged live here, people. Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and hoe and a piece of Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone keep them warm below until the rains come tumbling down. Pulling weeds and picking stones, man is made of dreams and bones. Feel the need to grow my own because the time is closer than. Rain, fall, rain, sun and rain Find my place in nature's chain Feed my body and my brain Until the rains come tumbling down Help me out! Inch by inch, row by row Gonna make this garden grow All it takes is a rake and hoe And a piece of fertile ground Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone keep them warm below until the rains come tumbling down. Thank you. What I'm noticing is that if we're going to change medicine, it's the ladies that are going to do it. This whole movement is driven by women. God bless you. What I like to offer, there's many people I've already met. Chris and Kate, are you in the audience? Would you stand up, please? And would you go back to Susan's desk in the back there? You're all breast cancer survivor victors. I'd like all the breast cancer women, if you would meet back at Susan's booth in the back there, buy a couple of my books, and I want you to start networking because if we're going to beat this whole thing, it's going to come from the ladies. Thank you much. God bless. Patrick, as always, thank you very much for sharing.